Josh Green here for Seconds Up. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Jimmy TKV. Here just one day away as we're speaking ahead of AJ versus Ndanu. How are you doing, mate? I'm all good. I'm all good. Just um, just excited about tomorrow, man. That'll be a good fight. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute cracker. But before we get to that, we've got to talk about your business first. Off mm -hmm. to a good start in 2024, which I think was really crucial for you. Excited getting back on the winning horse and, and getting off to a good start in the year. Yeah, man. To get the ball rolling so early is good because it means I could probably get possibly three more or maybe four more within the year because it gives me enough time. And the fact that I got it done early rather than waiting is better for me, you know, because obviously my last fight got cut, the fight before, I got cut really bad. Not many people would have been back in, back in the ring as quick as I was. So I'm happy I got past all of that and um, I'm back to, back to winning ways again. Does this feel like sort of a second version of you? You've got to sort of start again and build again up to the point you were, but were before and get back in sort of the rhythm of everything? To be honest, it's not necessarily build, but um, literally just got to um, get back to where I was before in other terms of um, get my position back because I was in a good position, you know, so the main thing is getting my position back. But I'm not really dwelling on it too much. It's a lesson learned more, if anything, that. Like, I'm not really sweating it. I'm not at the back of the pecking order, so I'm not really sweating it. So I've learned, and every time I perform, I'll be the, the best TKV that can be. When you set out your goals for this year, what was sort of on your list that you wanted to tick off this year? Titles, at least one sort of title. I just want to win a title. So um, as long as I could win a title, that is one thing that I aim to do this year. And... I'll be happy with that. I'll be satisfied with winning any type of title. The way you're going about it, obviously, it was a, a good return just over a month ago, I believe it was. You think yeah. you can get towards that, towards the end of the year? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I feel like in a fight or two, we'll be fighting for titles. But we'll see how things go because things don't go as planned all the time. So... As long as I keep winning, keep doing what I'm doing, staying in the gym, staying fit and healthy, um, that's all I can do and the rest will fall in place. Do you think because you've got that loss on your record, people will underestimate you a little bit more? They'll look at you maybe as a light touch than they did before? Uh, I don't mind. They can. It plays in my favour because if they do, then they're, they're making the wrong mistakes. They're going to go in there thinking it's going to be easy, but it's not going to be easy. I don't mind how they take me. I'm happy if they take me lightly. It makes it easier for me. Um, but um, pe people po probably do. People see a loss and think he he's beatable automatically, which is, is human nature. You get what I'm saying? So, but it is whatever. But when I'm in that ring, every fight is different and everyone turns up different on, on certain nights as well. So you could take me lightly. I don't mind. I don't mind. I, I, you know, I actually like that. Take me lightly. <laughs> You've had the experience of sparring with Anthony Joshua, who we're going to see tomorrow night. When you've had the chance of being in with a two-time world champion, somebody who's achieved what he has in sport, that must just give you confidence that you're able to, even though it is sparring, perform at that level, you're getting invited into those camps and they're putting that sort of trust into you. Exactly. The fact that they're putting that trust in me, the fact they keep bringing me back to the camps, says it all, you know, that I must be doing something right. And, um, yeah, it's just, it may, do you know what? I love it when AJ pulls me up for sparring. See, when the team pulls me up, I'm gas. I love it. But um, literally, it, it just shows that I'm doing something right and we get, and we get on quite well. So it, it is good to be around them camps. What's the atmosphere been like this time around? And have you noticed any differences to what you've seen before from AJ? Um, I feel like he's happier. He, I to be honest, he's always happy. But I feel like he's very content at the moment because he believes in what Ben Davison is saying. He believes in the method. He believes in what 
um, Ben Davidson is um, teaching him because as you, as we saw in his last fight, everything that was taught to him, he performed and put it on show and it and the results were great for him. So I feel like he's walking around very confident and content. And you can see that. He probably may not be thinking that, but um, you can see that he's very busy, that he's just a happy man at the moment. And you, I, as you know, as they say, a, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. So I believe age, age is going to be dangerous tomorrow. I think a lot of people said after Ngano against Tyson Fury that Fury maybe took him lightly. I'm sure you're going to tell me that that's certainly not the mindset that Anthony Joshua took up. A hundred percent. Every time I speak to Joshua and I'll say, oh, you'll be him, you'll do this, you do that. He goes, nah, they're not easy. I don't take no one lightly. AJ doesn't take anyone lightly. Like, he doesn't take anyone lightly. But that's his mentality. Because if he does, anyone, naturally, if you start taking people lightly, you start relaxing a little bit. So yeah, You don't take no one lightly. Because as you know, naturally, if you take someone lightly, you won't be at your best. So his mentality is, is always treat someone like a world champion. And that's a good mentality to have. So he's, he, he is treating um, Ghani like a very dangerous opponent. So I feel like he's mentally ready for that fight. We always talk about how analytical and how much into the stats and they watch fighters Ben and Lee Wiley are. The fact that you've got those rounds of footage against uh, Tyson Fury, that must be a big thing for the team that they've just got those extra bits they can watch. Um, I'm I'm not... Well, then again, you never know. But I'm not... I haven't heard nothing about having Tyson Fury's footage. I, I, I believe they don't. But even if it comes to that, I doubt that would be used against him. But I, I mean, you could, all they have to do is study is fights. Sparring is nothing. Sparring is something else. All you got to do is study what the guy does on the night. That's the main thing. So you can have all the sparring videos you want in the world. But what he does on the night is what matters the most. You get what I'm saying? So um, there's a lot to, to, to study from Fury. He's had a lot of fights and how he performs and what's good and bad. And obviously... Ben Davidson has worked closely with him for, I think, at least five fights. So, yeah, I mean, it will work in AJ's favour in a way. Yeah, I mean, the mindset that AJ's got now, obviously with the win over Otto Wallin, was probably the best version or the best performance, certainly, from AJ that we've seen in a while. How much can that change a fighter's mindset, do you think? Um. Well, what can change a fighter's mindset? In terms of just getting a, a really big win and an impressive win like oh, yes, yeah, yeah. against Colin. To, to be honest, I feel like that has changed his mindset. He believes in... I feel like there's more faith, there's more confidence, and there's more confidence with the coaching staff. You see, when you have confidence with the coaching staff, you could do a lot more. So it's the fact that that faith has been brought back and you can see he's very content. He's very happy. So, yeah, that... That fight did bring back, not not necessarily bring back. He was always confident, to be honest. But so, so, so I keep getting phone calls, man. Barry Barry's called me six times now, and <laughs> he's in Saudi over there. I don't know what he's doing, but he's calling me six times. Yeah, but anyway, um, yeah. So he's 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 a very confident man at the moment. That's what I've got to say. Certainly. I mean, we're taking it a little bit down to the wire here, but what would your bit, your final prediction be? I feel like, AJ, do you know, believe it or not, AJ breaks him down, pings him off with the jab. He's not going to expect it. And he'll be worried when he feels AJ's power. That Garni feels very confident as well from the way he's moving, the way he's, he thinks he's going to beat AJ, but I don't think that's the case. I think AJ breaks him down and knocks him out between round five and seven. That's my prediction. Very good. I do have to talk to you about Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark. We're going to be seeing that fight in just over three weeks' time. Terrific fight for the British heavyweight title. What are your thoughts on that one? I know you're working a little bit with Fabio. Yeah. Um, it is a great fight. To be honest, I do respect Fraser for taking that fight. Obviously, people expect him to be at the top straight away because he's had a lot of... Um, Amateur experience is an, an Olympic bronze medalist and stuff like that, but it's still an early fight to take in a way. 
only because it's his, it's his ninth fight. Like, not many people take such a hard fight that early. So, respect to Fraser. But um, I feel like my guy Fabio has it all the way. So, um, but it's boxing, it's sports. Um, just let the best man win. But my guy um, um, Fabio, I think he's going to do the job. How far do you think Fabio is away from that that world team? He's not far off, you know. I personally, he doesn't really need to fight someone like um, Fraser, but I think he wants to win the British title outright. That's what I believe it is. He wants to win it outright, um, and then he he'll probably have a European fight, fringe world level maybe, and then probably push start pushing on. But he like a lot of people. You, you've probably had his type of record probably jump onto the world scene a bit too early sometimes or maybe not. So he's probably ready for world level competitors. So you never know. I think he's already there. I think I think he can compete at the top. We started speaking about you and Muen speaking about you as well. You obviously returned to the ring just over a month ago. When can we expect to see you up next? Hopefully in April or May. So just those two that we I've been hearing about that by April and May. Keep our eyes out. Cheers for your time, mate. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>